Hey, remember when a Sly Cooper movie was announced back in 2014? If you're not too familiar with this whole movie adaptation thing, the team that brought us the Ratchet and Clank movie in 2016 were also going to be behind the production of this Sly Cooper movie. If you're ever curious, you can still find the trailer on YouTube on One Media's channel. Exact date of the upload was the 28th of January 2014. The trailer, or teaser to word it better, sits at 6.5 million views as of today. Looking at the description, its Twitter X page still seems to be up, but the official website itself is no more. Viewers are still commenting to this day. What could have been, right? Literally speaking, what could have been? Where would the Sly series be today if the movie or TV show, yep, TV show, I'll get to that, where would the series be today if any of these iterations had happened? Before we dive into that, you're probably wondering, what even happened to the Sly Cooper movie? Long story short, the movie wasn't officially cancelled per se, what I mean is, there was never any official word surrounding its cancellation from neither PlayStation and the company behind the film. If there's any sort of reply from Rainmaker or Blockade, the same production teams behind the Ratchet and Clank film, we simply got the movie still in development replies. And then poof, the Sly movie just didn't happen. The community pretty much presumed the movie cancelled at that point. A common theory surrounding such fate was that Ratchet and Clank movie's reception, especially in terms of box office sales, it seemed like PlayStation back then, who had outsourced Ratchet and Clank to a third party production team, just didn't have high hopes for Sly Cooper after Ratchet and Clank's performance in theaters. If you didn't know, this was before PlayStation Productions was even a thing. All current PlayStation licensed IPs, their TV shows and movies, are all produced under PlayStation Productions, a company founded back in 2019. Already, if PlayStation Productions was a thing back then, I'm speaking of 2014, around that time period, perhaps the fate of Sly Cooper, at least in terms of cinema or TV, would have been different. So, yeah. The movie didn't happen, and then out of the blue, the ones behind the Sonic Boom series tried bringing Sly Cooper to television. Lo and behold, nothing came out of it, and was also presumed cancelled. After that, PlayStation Productions was announced, and seeing as how PlayStation wanted to handle their own IPs moving forward, aka PlayStation Productions, perhaps some believed that Sly would be handled under them from now on. Alas, the fate of Sly Cooper movie or TV show remains a mystery. The most we've gotten out of all this is a synopsis and a slight piece of an interview with the director of the film. The plot itself was similar to the plot of the first game. According to the teaser's description, Sly Cooper, Bentley Turtle, and Murray Hippo, not sure if these were their official family names, at least for Bentley and Murray, but do feel free, by the way, to pause the video if you want to read the whole paragraph. The key points here are, the gang would go on adventures to retrieve pages of the Cooper family secrets, aka the Thievius Raccoonus. Clockwork, who they referred to as a Russian metallic owl, was most certainly planned to be in this film. Who better than Clockwork as the villain, right? Clockwork, even if we haven't seen much of him in the series, he still intrigues me as a character. Could you imagine the backstory the movie could have potentially showed us about Clockwork? The movie, for example, could have benefited from fleshing out some story elements of the first game. The Fiendish Five, if anything, how were they recruited? The Happy Camper Orphanage, we don't know much about it outside of comic issue 1 from 2004. In terms of interviews, the one thing still floating on the net is IGN's interview with director Kevin Monroe from March 29th, 2016. In it, he mentioned how the teaser itself was put together rather quickly, described the color noir feel of the teaser and went on to describe Sly as a thief with a heart of gold. Sadly, during that time, he was waiting for that phone call. The green light to further pursue the film. The phone call, I guess, just never happened, and that was it for the movie. Oh, and uh, did you know, in this teaser, Sly wasn't even voiced by his original voice actor, Kevin Miller. Bentley and Murray both got their original voices, and yet Sly didn't. 
Instead, we heard the voice of Ian James Corlett. I'm guessing this was their attempt at maybe attracting a bigger audience with a more widely known voice actor? I mean, why else would the main protagonist, Sly Cooper, not have his original voice, right? When looking at these designs, I think back to when we first got the teaser for the Ratchet and Clank movie. See the difference for Ratchet here? I suppose the same would have happened to Sly and the gang, some fine tuning here and there until the movie's final trailer, if of course the movie was still a thing. How long has it been now since the movie teaser? 10 years. Whoa. What could have been, right? Like I mentioned in the beginning, what could have been, literally? Where would the Sly series be today had the movie released in theaters and succeeded? Keyword here is if it had succeeded. Quite frankly, after the reception and sales of the Ratchet and Clank film, folks might have been very skeptical about the fate of the Sly movie. Not to mention that the movie was going to be handled by the same companies and director Kevin Monroe. But hey, that was a long time ago. Why not imagine the opposite? A big what if. Scenario, what if the Sly movie had managed to not only bring a whole wave of new fans, but to really do the series justice? Imagine the movie succeeding at the box office with great reviews. Don't you think it would have captured Sony's attention at least? Enough to warrant the series to move forward? Although the Ratchet and Clank film didn't meet everyone's expectations, the game based off this film managed to be Insomniac's best-selling Ratchet and Clank title of all time. We could argue about the price tag, low price compared to today's prices, but in the end, despite the movie's performance, the game itself still managed to capture the attention of many. We're not even talking about a console launch title here. The game released in 2016 and was deemed a game in the lines of a Pixar movie. There is, however, a caveat. Comparing Sly to Ratchet at the end of the day, Insomniac constantly kept proving how passionate they were for this series. So in a sense, Ratchet, out of Jack, and Sly always had the upper hand. If you have a passionate team who's willing to do more Ratchet and Clank games, then chances are we get more Ratchet and Clank games. As for Sly, Sucker Punch moved on. They did say Never Say Never back in 2022 after shutting down rumors for a new game, but in reality, the team's busy on other projects. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, although Sanzaru was passionate about what they produced, it never got its Egypt DLC and that automatically minimized the chances of Sly 5 ever happening. However, not having more games didn't stop Sony from at least saying yes to a Sly Cooper movie. After all, we did get a teaser. Sony might have been on board at first, trying to explore other avenues for Sly, but ultimately the Ratchet and Clank film most likely discouraged everyone involved. And hey, if they didn't believe in the Sly movie, they surely at first believed a TV show would work instead. This one was announced in 2017, but nothing came of it. Although Sly Cooper is not currently tied to any first party studio, a movie could have potentially greenlit a game based off it, just like Ratchet and Clank. But like stated before, Ratchet always had the upper hand because clearly Insomniac just loves the IP and there's no doubt. So with Sly not having that advantage, a game based off its movie would uh, make anyone skeptical. Again, let's just pretend the movie happened and the game based off it happened. In the end, it would have been something. It would have been another new Sly game. I don't know about you, but Sly's movie outfit still looks epic to me. Seeing this type of attire on Sly in an actual game would be epic. Sly in pants looks cool. <laughs> a game based off the movie could have potentially acted as a reboot of the first game, and with it, it could have sparked future sequels, a complete reboot of the franchise. Although it's not Sly 5 we're talking about, I think many would have still appreciated more Sly games regardless. Be it reboot, remake, whatever you want to call it. But question remains, seeing as how both movie and TV show were targeting CG animation, would fans have appreciated a Sly game in CG? Honestly, CG Sly looks really cool. I really loved the dark cinematic feel in the teaser. I'd love to exploit this in a game, but I still love the classic style, that's for sure. If Sly got a reboot in CG, pretending the movie happened and succeeded, would this style have attracted even more people? 
Look at Rift Apart, beautiful visuals. Surely these visuals were a huge positive factor for sales. Mass majority of animated films today all aim for CG. Why else were they trying to bring Sly Cooper back in CG? All in all, even if we knew the folks behind the production of this film, in the end, the Sly Cooper movie lost potential. Thank you for watching, I'll leave it at that. If you enjoyed the video, perhaps you'd like to subscribe, and as always, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon, it means so much. And thank you all for watching, I've been Vivi, and until next time...